And uh, depression is absence of inner being. Yeah. Absence is too strong a word, but you know mm -hmm. what we mean. And it is always present for one reason only. You've been giving attention to lack. So if you're wanting to know what your purpose is and you can't figure it out, then you're turning your attention toward lack and depression is on the horizon. In other words, it doesn't start out as depression, it just yeah. starts out as a little lack. But the lack, if you don't transmute the energy, if you don't pivot, then the, the subtle little, little irritation can turn to full-blown depression or full-blown anger. It is usually depression if it is pointed towards self and it is usually anger if it is pointed towards somebody else. But you don't have to define all of that, it's still lack, you see. Okay. Then what happened was, when you got disconnected, you heard us say earlier, if you have negative emotion and you don't transmute the energy or pivot, don't worry about it, it won't go away, it'll just get bigger. Well, that's what happened to you. It just got bigger and it just got bigger and it just got bigger till you reached the point of strong wanting. You actually went outside and yelled, what? And in your outcry, even though you were in a lackful place, you were expressing strong, strong wanting. And when the wanting became stronger than the awareness of lack, then your inner being spiraled back into you. The thing that usually happens with depression is that you get lower with, with any negative emotion. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger if you don't take the time to pivot. Stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger until you feel so defeated you stop struggling. Yeah. And in the moment you stop struggling, in the moment you stop pushing against, your inner being floods fully into you. Our friend has a similar story where he uh, w received a telephone call with more bad news. And he went outside and looked upward. He can still remember the snow falling on his face. And he said, I give up. Because he recognized that no amount of effort on his part was going to fix this. I give up. And in that moment he had an infusion of non-physical energy that to this day he can remember with great detail. His hair stood up all over, bubbles through his body, a feeling of elation. It was so extraordinary he went to a psychologist and said, what's wrong with me? I'm happy all the time. <laughs> what we've been talking about in all these hours we've been together is when you're full of yourself, you feel great, and when you're empty of yourself, you feel awful. What was, what said my name? I mean, it was different than a dream. It was oh, it is your inner being. It is your inner being projecting a block of thought to you that you translated. But it was, it was your inner being and everyone vibrating there, letting you know that all is well. And what they were, you see, yes. they were projecting all is well to you. You were the object of their attention. That's why you translated it as your name, because all of this non-physical energy looking right at you, and your name is the representation of you, the easiest translation of the rep representation of you. Remember, non-physical energy is not speaking words. Right. It is offering block of thought, energy and you are the translator of it. So what could be a better translation when hosts of non-physical energy, pure positive energy, is looking right at you and flooding you with pure positive energy? Isn't it logical that you would translate it as me, my name? Yeah. Because it was all focused at you? Good. I just have one more thing. I have a friend, a uh, sister-in-law very close to me who was into such a dis, uh, depressed state, she really is having a hard time getting out of it. She has this big black hole that comes to her, she said, and to the point where she doesn't want to live anymore. She's getting help now and hopefully she'll come out of it. Is that just, she's so disconnected? She is giving the majority of her attention to lack. And most counselors don't help that very much yeah, because they see, yeah. because they keep prodding to try to find out what's wrong. They keep they keep looking for something else to blame. First they blame the parents and then that was no longer yeah. popular. And then some of them started blaming past lives and and uh, <laughs> and and now uh, they're blaming uh, uh, fictional molestations. In other words, everyone is looking for something to blame when the whole blaming process is the process of disconnection, you see. Mm -hmm. The thing that would bring her out of it faster than anything is to begin looking 
looking for positive aspects, to look for things to appreciate, to talk about what she likes. Yeah. But sometimes it is hard. We were visiting with a woman not long ago and she said, Abraham, I want to be well. Can you help me? So we asked the question that you would expect Abraham to ask. We said, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We said, good, you know what you don't want. And whenever you know what you don't want, you know more clearly what you do want. So what is it you do want? And she said, I want to be well. We said, good, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We said, good, whenever you know what you don't want, you always know more clearly what you do want. So what is it you want? And she said, I want to be well. We said, good, why do you want to be well? And she said, because I don't want to be sick. We were getting nowhere. And she was getting angry with us. We've heard our physical friends talk about being stuck and we've always said you can't be stuck because energy is always in motion. But if there was ever anyone stuck, she was stuck because she was sending her energy. She was wanting one thing and flowing her energy in the other so equally that she could not budge from that spot. So we took the approach of some counselors. We saw that we could not get her to flow energy toward what she did want because her habit was so much the other way. So we decided to prod a little negatively just to get the energy to break loose. So we said, what's so awful about being sick? She said, I'm cooped up. I can't get out. We said, what's so awful about that? She said, I'm lonely. We said, good. You know what you don't want? What is it you do want? And she said, I'd like to get out more. And everyone in the room felt her energy break loose. Then we said, why do you want to get